Well, I think I'm, I'm, it's either going to be uh, Ozempic, because I like the song, or Majorno. I don't even know if they have a song, but that seems to be the way to immediate weight loss, Evan. And anything else I can do for you, just uh, you know, ask me off air, because it's really none of my business how you're going to go about losing the weight that you want to lose getting ready for a full on uh, a late summer run by the New York Yankees to another World Series appearance as they take care of business against the Dodgers. And let's just say it the way it is. While the New York Mets are busy getting swept by the Toronto Blue Jays, our guy, Aaron Judge, who uh, has no care for his body at all, runs face first into a chain link fence uh, out there in uh, Dodgerland. By the way, why there's no cushioning on a fence in 2023 is mind-boggling to me. But we all know the reality. Broken toe, out for 10 days. That sucks. Welcome to New York. Good afternoon, Evan. How are you today, kid? Did you just call me fat? What happened? Did you just call me fat? No, I did not. Are you saying, hey, Evan, I haven't seen you in three days. You put on LBs? Oh, 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 Zempic. The other one's called Majorno. <laughs> Uh, one of them uh, might cause uh, thyroid cancer, oh, really? but outside of that, I think it's uh, a healthy way to lose weight. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you know what's unhealthy? Watching what? a baseball team not score runs for three uh, straight yeah, days. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, right? Oh, right? Disgusting. Yeah, not yeah. good. Not good at all for and you. As far as the Aaron Judge catch is concerned, you got to yeah. ask yourself a question. As awesome as it was, and it was awesome. Was I it smart? Nothing, it was, yeah, I mean, I remember when he made that diving attempt. I think it was in 2019. It was in September, made a diving attempt at a ball in right field, and he ended up, like, fracturing his ribs to the point where it affected him the following year, yeah. and it led to a discussion, a fair discussion, which is, is it worth diving for balls? Right, is old. it worth running into fences? And if the Yankees miss Aaron Judge for, let's say, a couple of weeks, I'm not saying it's going to sink their season, especially with guys it coming back, hurts. but it's then then it's not worth it. No, I agree. Then and the listen, catch is not you know, worth it. You know, it's funny, it. like... You know, we want our cake, we want to eat it too, right? Right. When a ball player doesn't go all out and try to make a catch, we kill him. I agree. I don't care who that ball yeah. player is. You're right. When a guy does go all out and make a great catch, which is what it was, awesome. on the run into the fence and all that stuff, and now we're looking at, you know, the prospect of him maybe missing time, which he's already done this year for 10 games, we then say, well, why are you doing it, right? No, I get it. It's like, you can't easy. win. Right? right. You're right. I would always... I would always want the player that wants to make the play. But in Aaron Judge's case, because he is such an instrument, a part of everything the Yankees do, mm -hmm. both defensively and, of course, with his bat, I mean, like, I don't want to say it. No, I don't want to say it. Say it. I don't want to say it. Say it. I'm glad he went for it. No, I... I I get that because here's the I thing. can't have it both ways. Craig, I can't. It's like paint a picture of where everybody is. It's Saturday night. Yeah. It's Yankees Dodgers. Remember, you lost the first game. You're up five to three in this in this game. It's the eighth inning. There's a runner on base. Yeah. As JD hits that ball, if Judge doesn't catch it, it's five four. The tying runs in scoring Got position. Game. That game could be lost. It very well could be lost. We have no idea. The game could turn differently. So in that moment on a Saturday night nationally televised, it's Yankees, Dodgers. If you're a Yankee fan watching that game, you're pumped up when he makes that catch. Of course. Because it's arguably a game-saving kind of catch. Yeah. But if the repercussions are he's got a bad tone now for two weeks, and we all know how valuable Aaron Judge is, he's insanely valuable, it's not worth it. No, and we I, can say that today, 48 hours later, but in the moment, yeah, we all want him to make the Look, play. I got to say, uh, the way I felt about it watching it, great catch, felt good about it, pumped up. Didn't think it was all that serious. Uh, then I realized that it looks like the bottom of that wall is cement, I guess. I don't know if it is or not. But the way they have the bottom, right. you know, uh, it's, I don't well, know what it is, but clearly his foot hits and he grimaces here, a little bit. Here's the problem. And then you, didn't play yesterday. You, you may not agree with what I'm about to say, but here's right. the problem. There's a good chance it, I won't. That made it bad. First of all, the moment was ruined by Spike Lee. Maybe you'll agree with that. I mean, do we need to see Spike Lee jumping up and down, ripping his sweatshirt off to show his Aaron Judge jersey? Why well, wasn't your Aaron Judge jersey being shown the entire time? You're waiting for the eighth He's inning when for he makes a, a leaping moment. catch? Yeah. So you could be caught on Fox ripping your shirt off? Yeah. But Aaron Judge, after the game, made a little bit of a comment. He said, of course I'm fine. I think the wall took the worst of it. Yeah. Right? Big, tough comment. We yeah. all love it. Tough guy. And then the next day, 
Maybe you weren't right, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the, the wall won. Then the next day we find out the wall's there in right yeah. field, and you're not. I mean, they get a big win. They win the series, obviously. A good West Coast trip all in all. Uh, what, third place? I think is that what it is, right? Yeah. Uh, but listen, I don't think the placement matters right now. It's out there playing winning baseball. I mean, they win damn near every series they play, it feels like. Uh, they got good pitching. Obviously, Cortez goes on, or I don't know if that's official yet or not. Looks like you're going to miss Cortez now for a couple of starts. But the New York Yankees, uh, Stan comes back, hits a home run right away. Josh Donaldson. Donaldson comes back, hits a couple of them. And you're like, you know what? Could you imagine if this team had even a month when all the guys that well, were supposed to be in certain spots were there? It's, they become a very tough team to beat. It's definitely frustrating to think, okay, I got guys back. Now I'm losing guys. But even with Nestor Cortez, who's going to miss his next start, and hopefully it's not too serious, Clark Schmidt looks like a different guy his last three starts. Yeah. Domingo Herman doesn't need sticky stuff. He was dominant last night. Yeah. So the Yankees, and they've done this for a while in the Aaron Boone era. You're going to love what I'm about to say because this is right up your alley. They've overachieved when they've had a lot of injuries. We've seen it a lot. 2019 was always the best example of it. And to a lesser degree this year, they haven't been, Craig, to your point, fully healthy. They're always yeah, dealing always with something. some kind of injury, some kind of injuries. Even with getting Donaldson and Stanton back, now you lose Judge. You may lose Cortez. Radon still hasn't pitched. And yet, they're winning. And what they just did on this West Coast trip was very impressive. They played two playoff teams, essentially, and they won both series, and they won four out of six, and now yep. they come home against Chicago and Boston with a chance to do even more damage. They're 10 games above five, 11 games above 500 now. I mean... They have figured it out. After a tough start to this season, yeah. the New York Yankees, despite all these injuries, have figured it out. All right, that's the Yankees side. The Mets side from the weekend, obviously, it's not good at all. Outside of uh, you know the, uh, the the nice Hall of Fame uh, situation on Saturday, which was great, obviously, for Howard Johnson and for uh, Gary Cohen and for Howie Rose. And who am I missing? Al Leiter. And Al Leiter, pardon Your me. Your friend? My buddy, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a uh, lighter. And the fact that I love this one. The Mets, I'll give them credit. Yeah. The Mets tried everything to distract you from the uh, sweep against the Blue Jays. Pete Alonso now has more <laughs> home runs yeah. than any other Mets at City Field. And while that might be something to enjoy, unfortunately, with no offense to speak of, getting swept at home, I get this sense. And tell me if I'm wrong on your end as a Mets fan that every time you feel like. Okay, here we go. Yeah. There's a major step backwards. Yes. Is that fair? Dude, this has happened multiple times. After they had that homestand a few weeks ago. They got, they went to, they got to 500. They had five they and one trips. trips over 500. Right. At all. And then they go on the road to Chicago and Colorado and lose both series. They sweep the Philadelphia <laughs> Phillies where they weren't hitting the tar out of the ball, but they were getting great starting pitching, great bullpen efforts. They sweep a division rival. And again, you're thinking, we're back. Yeah. We're good. And then you give us this dud over the weekend, which came down to two things. The offense sucked, and I think that's obviously the headline, and it's everybody. I think Brandon Nimmo had an awful weekend. Obviously, Lindor had an awful weekend. I mean, top to bottom, nobody hit. Well, especially with guys on base, too. Oh, right? my God. Yeah. Like, to me, the tone for this entire weekend was set Friday after that hour-and-a-half rain delay when they had runners on first and third, nobody out, with the top of the order coming up down one nothing, and they did nothing against Chris Bassett who basically had to pitch in a rush because his wife was in labor, but he tells his wife, the ball's on this guy, I guess I respect it, hey, honey, I know you're in labor. I'm going to come to you after the game is over. Oh, there's an hour and a half rain delay. Just wait. <laughs> I got you. And then Bassett goes out and pitches into the freaking eighth inning right. and then leaves and says, all right, now I'm done. Now I'm going to Toronto. Now I'm going to see my baby. Congratulations to Bassett, but that was infuriating. But they did nothing. Also weird that he chose to have a Canadian child. But that's another story <laughs> for another day. You might want to rethink that at some point. But, you know, she, the baby's not a U.S. citizen. I guess technically right? not. Right? Not technically. Wasn't the baby born in Toronto? The baby was born. At, that's my, my understanding of it. My understanding is the baby was born in Canada. Yeah? yeah. There you go. You got a Canadian kid. And then they couldn't hit. And then Buck had a miserable weekend. He decides to face Vladimir Guerrero Jr. with a base open. He decides to keep Dominic Leone in the game yesterday after they come back and they tie the game at four. Yeah. It was awful, and now I'm getting a headache from this roller coaster. It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down, and things may get uglier because now they got to go to, to now, Atlanta for three games. I, I don't, I don't know. If, listen, I don't think anything's happening. But uh, did you see the thing? I think SNY put it out. I know I saw it. I I, I don't want to give SNY credit or blame if it wasn't them, but my memory uh, serves me that it was SNY 
uh, that there's a report out there that Buck's on thin ice? No, that was a fake story. That was a fake story? I'm here for you, pal. All right, just chugging. And you know how we all knew it was a fake story? Go ahead. This is actually kind of funny. So I saw this yeah. from a, a fake Andy Martino. Okay. That so it was not Buck, SNY. That but well, Andy Martino works for SNY. Oh, but so it he does work for SNY. But it wasn't Andy Martino. But it wasn't Andy Martino. It was a fake Andy Martino. But so he works for SNY. He works for SNY. God, but the fake Andy Martino doesn't. The fake Andy Martino starts tweeting out about how <laughs> Buck and it. Steve Cohen had a screaming match. All this fake stuff. Yeah. And the reason we all got tipped off to it not being real yeah. is that we were all blocked by the real Andy Martino. Got it. So right. why? So we never would have seen it. So we never would have seen it. I just want to make sure about that. Meanwhile, listen, Thomas Nito's gone. Uh, the Mets can't score runs. They can't win games. And it's a season that, much like the last two with Steve Cohen, you start off with tremendous hope and, uh, you know, thoughts of this is going to be our year. And there's no saying it won't be, obviously. Mm-hmm. You got a lot of days left and a lot of games left. You know, the notion that the season's a wrap is silly to me. No. Because you can get hot like that, just like you with the cold streaks. But... It is a flawed team. Well, you just thought on multiple occasions they were about to take off. And I really thought it, too, after they swept the Phillies, that this is the takeoff. And now they're back to 500. Their offense has been stymied. Kodai Senga gave you a dud yesterday. The bullpen's not great outside of David Robertson, who had his kind of foot stubbed when he gives up the RBI double to Guerrero on Saturday. And now they're staring at the Atlanta Braves this week. So it's just... It's been an up-and-down season, and right now, if you're a Mets fan, especially when you see how well the Yankees are playing, because it's a part of us, we see what the Yankees have done. Doesn't mean it's the end-all, be-all. It's frustrating, and you start to wonder, what is this team? Like It starts to go through your mind, because we're 60 games into the season, Craig. We're not 50 games in. We're not 10 games in. We're we're 60 games into a season. We're past the third mark of the year, and you start to wonder, is this what it's going to be? Is this what the Mets are? An up-and-down, start-stop, 500 kind of team. And I think we're going to learn an awful lot about the Mets over the next six days. Not just in Atlanta, yeah. but even against the Pirates. Because as of right now, the Pirates are a team you're going to have to battle with to make the National League playoffs. Yeah, it's uh, it's a shame, really, because uh, you kind of felt like, yeah, we're gonna, we are could spend more money than anybody else. We're going to do what other teams have done. We're going to buy ourselves a spot in the postseason. And like we always say... It's great to have an owner that spends money. That's paramount yeah, yeah. to feeling like you have a chance. There's no doubt about that. So I'm certainly not knocking it. I embrace it. I wish all my owners were like that. They're, you know, Cost is not never an issue. Let's go out there. But just because you spend the money, learn from the Yankees. The New York Yankees have spent well over a billion dollars since they last made an appearance oh, no, 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 no. in a World Series. No, no, no. You guys have no. now spent. I was doing the math with Big Mac earlier. Yeah. You're nearing a billion well, dollars you said without a World Series appearance. You said something very <laughs> unfair to the New York Yankees. What's that? Because the New York Yankees every single year yes. make the playoffs. Yes, they do. And that's but the they're bar. they're judged on World Series, no, I was I, always told. I understand that. And we'll yeah. get to that discussion with the Mets. But right now, your hope was... At the minimum, this yeah. is a playoff team every single year. Yes. And as we sit here today on June 5th, if I asked Met fans, my fellow Met fan, hey, yeah. you think they make the playoffs? I bet you we get a 50-50 answer. I don't think there's I a think that's, I think that's confidence from accurate. Met fans right yeah. now that they're going to make the postseason. I think that's an accurate statement. So when statement. you say and you yeah. compare it to the Yankees, I'd say this about the Yankees. They're there every year. Yeah. They may choke in October. They may get beat up by the Astros every October, but they're there every October. Yeah. Could you imagine spending a billion dollars in three years and not making it? Into a World Series. Or winning a playoff round. Yeah, or winning a playoff round. Even better. Good job on that. Thanks. I mean, it just shows you, for all that Met crap about, you know, the Yankees and all the money, you're living it right now. Spending the money, in theory, it makes you competitive. Yeah. But it don't guarantee nothing. But no regrets. No like, regrets. No regrets, man. You got to spend money. I don't care about the small payroll teams around Major League Baseball. Screw now, you got to spend it wisely. But the Mets have to figure out a way to be more consistent offensively. This manager's got to figure out a way to not screw up every other day. And it's not even the lineups that bother me. I think we spend way too much oxygen breaking down the lineup and who should hit where. Because I don't think it matters. Guys have to hit. Yep. Like, you want to drop Lindor, you want to move him to lead off, you want to move McNeil, go out and move this guy, that guy. How about this? Nobody's hitting. Yeah. Nobody's hitting. What the hell difference what? does it make if nobody's hitting? It makes it very interesting one week from tonight when you and I are doing our show live from the Paramount Theater in uh, Huntington out Long Island. 
uh, along with Pete Alonzo, of course, and the Alonzo Foundation. Mm. That makes that show uh, very, very interesting the day before the Subway Series. He hasn't been great begins. either. I know he had another home run yeah. and he leads the world, but he had one other hit this entire weekend. Like He yes. hasn't been hitting the ball all over the place either. All I'm, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is that makes that night very interesting. By the way, speaking of that night, uh, I talked to Petey over the weekend, and he wanted to make sure uh, that uh, people that may want to go that uh, maybe couldn't afford tickets, that you and I give away one package. Nice. And let me just tell you what we're going to give away a little bit later on today. If you'll bear with me here one second, Ev. And I thought this was very generous of the foundation. All right, so here we're here later today. Not right now, but later today. We'll do it in the 4 o'clock hour. Evan and I are going to give away a home run package to the uh, Carton and Roberts Pete Alonzo uh, comedy night. Uh, four tickets, a swag bag, and VIP access to all the pre-show festivities, okay? Mm. So we're going to give that away sometime after 4 o'clock. Beautiful. And that's for, uh, and I'm, I'm told that there are about five tables left to be sold. So if you want to go, just go to the Paramount's website. The show is produced by our friends at Gotham Comedy. The great guys over at Paramount, amazing host for this event. And there's only about five tables left. And then the entire event is a sellout. And we're going to give away one of those tables uh, 4 o'clock today. Fair enough, Ev? Indeed. We got six more Met games before that big event. Six what do you think, more. Right, so what do you think they do before record-wise? <laughs> you really want my answer right now? Atlanta and Pittsburgh, right? <laughs> I think they're going to get swept by the Braves. Wow. You oh, and Frank honest. the Tank and Lockstep. Well, it's not about being like Frank the Tank right now. It's about t- it's tough to remain positive. And I think I've been positive throughout the season to a degree, but it's challenging. Is it not challenging to remain Swept positive? By the brain. And also, I got a lot of scar tissue from Atlanta. Not just last year's sweep, but basically my entire childhood watching Chipper Jones and John Rocker dance on our grave. You know what I mean? Yes. It's very difficult to say confidently. After what we've seen, the way this team has played, the way they've played on the road, what the Braves did to the Mets down the stretch, it's very tough for me to say into the microphone, yeah, Craig, gee golly, we're going to win two out of three. Yeah, I mean, you can't predict it. Obviously, no. you have no offense So my right feeling now. right now is they're probably going to get swept. Yeah. All right, well, listen, we got a lot to do. 877-337-6666. The Yanks take two out of three from the Dodgers, go four and two uh, out of the six games out west. Uh, neither team plays tonight. And we now wait the word on Aaron Judge. And by the way, if Aaron Judge goes on the IL, uh, what does that do in regards to the uh, Subway Series, Evan? What does it do? Ten games, right? <laughs> he makes him makes him miss it. He would miss the Subway Series. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Can't thank God. That. I'm rooting for that. I don't want the guy to be hurt, but do I want to face Aaron Judge? No. You'd have Aaron Judge not in the Subway Series. Yeah, it just means Giancarlo had five home runs over those two games. There oh, you man. go. 